Hello then, welcome. Today we're taking a look at this Z88 computer and uh, it's a little handheld device. It doesn't weigh much, I guess about a kilo and uh, it was uh, made by uh, Cambridge Computers. And as far as I know, it's uh, some leftover design from uh, Sinclair after, after the company went bust and uh, was sold to uh, Amstrad. Uh, the machine itself is a little um, has a little display, eight characters by I guess four or something like that, and it has a rubber keyboard. And the funny thing about this is that the rubber is on the outside. There's no metal shell like on the Sinclair. Uh, the machine itself is quite interesting. Um, at the bottom here, it has a little. Uh, there are three slots for memory uh, expansion packs. And apart from the RAM cartridges that I have here, in uh, slot number 3, you could write your programs to an EEPROM here. And of course the EEPROM is erasable by ultraviolet light, so uh, those packs, once they're written, you can't uh, erase them unless you have an EEPROM eraser. And uh, I think you could buy an EEPROM eraser together with the machine. Um, but I don't have that on, on mine here. On the left here, there's a power input and a little contrast uh, adjustment here. And uh, at the bottom there are the three uh, memory cartridge uh, slots. And on the left here there's a COM port so that you can uh, get data in and out. And uh, yeah, apart from a little stand uh, so that you have a better writing typing angle, uh, there's no other in and outs on this machine. Uh, the machine is run on uh, four uh, AA batteries and uh, there's a little uh, battery slot down here and that's it really and apparently it could run uh, for very long times on these four batteries I heard they were very popular with journalists who were out in the field and um, I believe that's true but anyway um, let's open it up and see how similar it is to uh, the Sinclair designs that uh, we know Now, of course, when I say Sinclair designs, uh, that includes the Spectrums, the ZX81, uh, ZX80 uh, series of machines. But it also includes uh, stuff like the New Brain, which was, of course, also uh, designed by Sinclair. So, yeah, uh, my guess is that there's a single PCB in here and... Um, and apart from that, the design should be very similar to the new brain computer. So, yeah, let's see if we can get it apart. Let's go for that apart. Okay, uh, let's see if we can get it apart. Yeah, there's one here. Yeah, we got everything out, and uh, I guess we're all seen now. There we go, okay. So, let's go to the back, and the PCB is here. And yeah, ah! There's a weird little sticker here uh, that says Cambridge Computers 32K EEPROM and I don't know where that comes from because that looks something that should be on the outside of the machine. Uh, but anyway, uh, we have a very very um, compact little thing here and um, of course there's the keyboard itself. I'm not sure, okay, let's remove that. Okay. And the keyboard again, it has a memory membrane underneath this uh, aluminium stuff uh, with a rubber thing on top. So it's very Sinclairish, but the rubber is uh, not covered with a metal shield. And you can see the membrane in here. Uh, inside the machine we have, of course, uh, most obviously we have the, the big display here. And that's, a, that's actually a standard display. And you can see all the display control chips on the back here. So uh, straight, straightforward indeed. Okay, so if you look inside, we have of course uh, the main CPU here, and there are some fingers here, and it looks like there used to be, uh, looks like it would be possible to uh, connect some stuff here, but uh, but apparently not. So my get best guess is, um, but apparently not. There's no way uh, you can remove the the cover around here. So my best guess is that this is for manufacturing, manufacturing testing. And uh, that makes a lot of sense because uh, you can see when you plug something in here, this is designed for hot plug. 
we will have the 5 volt and the ground will co be connected first and then after that the data lines will be connected here. So it looks like this is for manufacturing testing. Uh, otherwise we have the power supply, uh, of course these are run by batteries here or from this little jack here. And, um, and uh, there's basically just a noise filter here and some capacitors for, for the supply. Uh, also we have a uh, crystal here, 9.8 MHz, and my guess is that that is divided up by 3 because that gives the clock frequency about uh, 3.2 MHz, which is just nice for the Z80 CPU here. Then we have a custom chip, uh, a ULA if you like, or an ASIC, um, uh, made by NEC in Japan. And uh, that is different from what uh, Sinclair used to do. Uh, so yeah, very interesting. Uh, of course then we have... Um, Another NEC chip, my best bet is that this is a ROM, a mask ROM, and uh, another mask ROM here also from NEC. So uh, this is the main operating system plus the application software. Uh, on the left here we have a lot of transistors and uh, a little bit of uh, adjustment. And uh, I don't really, where do they go? They go to uh, these uh, RAM pack connectors here. So uh, this machine needs a RAM pack to run um, a little plastic thing here, <coughs> a little plastic thing here that uh, slides onto these connectors here, and uh, they are really good quality as well. Down here we actually have a high voltage circuit for uh, the programming voltage for EEPROMs, uh, and the EEPROMs of course can be connected in uh, slot three, and then you can program your programs onto that. And uh, once you've done that, you can run them uh, directly. So yeah, you can program your, other, your own little programs. Um, one of these has a BBC Basic uh, interpreter, which is uh, very famous in the UK. And um, so yeah, once you write your own programs, as I said, you can program them to this cartridge, if, if I had one. Um, th th this one, cable sticking out, is uh, basically just a serial port. Um, something interesting is that the entire enclosure is made from a I think it's aluminium. The whole thing is in aluminium, just like the underside of the keyboard here. So EMC wise, it's really, really nice. So the question that I had initially, is it very Sinclair-ish? Um, I mean the buzzer here, the loudspeaker looks like a Sinclair loudspeaker. They probably got it from the same supplier. And the CPU is a Z80 CPU, uh, but otherwise there's not much Sinclair in here. It's very interesting actually. Uh, and a very, very different concept to anything I have seen in, in quite a while. Um, the concept with the plug-in memory cartridges is, is, is very nice. And uh, also that you can program your own cartridges. So yeah, excellent, excellent. And um, I'm not sure where this sticker come from, uh, where it came from. Um, it should probably sit in some recess in the plastic somewhere. But uh, yeah, I uh, well, let's just keep it here. Cambridge Computers, 32K EEPROM. Ah, it must have come from a, a, ah, like this. There we go, it must have come from a little cartridge here. But uh, I'll just keep it here, it doesn't do any harm, and uh, I may need that in future if I get any uh, EEPROMs for it. But anyway, uh, that was a teardown. Let me just, um, let me just plug it back together and uh, switch it on. Uh, because this is actually a working machine. Okay, so I got it back together and it's actually quite nice. Uh, the display is uh, full graphics. It's very clear. There's no backlighting, but it's very easy to read anyway. But anyway, as you can see, there are all the different applications uh, on, a, on a list over here on the left. And uh, there's a diary, which is basically a to-do list. Then there's Pipe Dream, which is a word processor. Basic is the BBC Basic, which is a very good basic and very fast. It's a pocket calculator, there's a calendar application. Uh, you can set the clock and the alarm and the filer. So I guess you can see what programs are on your on your RAM cards and EEPROM cards. Then there's a printer editor, a panel, a terminal, and a way of importing and exporting data through the COM port. And uh, that's it on the little application screen here. Then we have a bigger screen here that is called Suspended Activities. So you can see what you are busy with and uh, when you last uh, were busy with that. So if we go into the diary, which is already open, I have, I have written this is a text. 
And uh, that's it really, uh, just a quick little entry in my diary. Uh, just an index button on the keyboard, when you press that you go back to the main program. And uh, I have written a little program, Hello World, and uh, in BBC Basic of course, and, uh, and uh, you can run that, uh, no problem. That works good. And uh, we can go back to the main uh, screen here with the Pipe Dream, which is a word processor. And uh, that looks very nice with the uh, indents and everything. So that is really, uh, really awesome. I, I like it a lot. I think it would be good for travelers, which is of course what it was designed as. So it's basically something like the Zion 3, but very, very nice little machine. And even today I could use it when uh, traveling. It's very lightweight and very sturdy. The only thing of course that is not there is uh, connectivity. Uh, there's no internet access or anything like that. But a really, really nice piece of hardware. So uh, anyway, uh, that's it for me. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching and uh, see you again later.